Oh, the end of the world. How depressing. Well, it never stopped me before, so here's another story about the end of the world. Well, in this one, it won't exactly rip apart our planet or terminate the universe, but sea level rise may be the most real apocalyptic threat our world faces today. Better learn how to swim. For life in large parts of Europe, Asia, and the U.S. is about to become impossible. Let's do some time traveling. Let's take a ride into the future. Several centuries ahead. That should do the trick. Now look around. You'll be shocked by what you see. Probably the U.S. East Coast. Well, it's gone. Florida, Louisiana, the states surrounding the Mississippi. Vanished. The Great Plains of North America. A vast ocean now stretches out over them. In Europe, things aren't any better. Northern France, England, Denmark, Northern Germany, Belgium and the Netherlands, all gone. Spain has almost become an island. Much of the former Soviet Union has turned into a swamp. And how about those Baltic states? Egypt, Algeria, Vietnam, and Bangladesh all but vanished. Most of it below the sea now. Think of 80 meters of sea level rise worldwide. Sounds pretty wet, doesn't it? Still, this is exactly where the sea level seems to be heading. For now, we can relax a bit. The vast bodies of water needed to cause the big flood are still safely stored away, frozen in ice. But you'll find vast quantities of it on the South Pole, on mountain tops, and in the porous permafrost soil of Greenland, Alaska, and Siberia. But as I speak, all of that is melting. The North Pole melts so fast it could be entirely gone by the year 2050. The Antarctic western tip releases ice much faster than it's replenished. In Greenland, Alaska, and Siberia, the permafrost is melting and turning once soil, once frozen soil, into wetlands. Everywhere on Earth, glaciers are vanishing and mountaintops are blackening, and all of this water discharges right into the sea. The greenhouse effect is the most likely culprit. Every day we pump vast amounts of carbon dioxide dioxide into the atmosphere, a gas that traps the warmth of the sunlight. Consequently, it gets warmer on Earth because of this. The sea gets warmer and expands. But hey, that's not everything. The ice melt, or the melting ice, should be the next big problem on our hands. If Antarctic were to melt, completely it would give us about 61 meters of sea level rise worldwide. Greenland should add another 7.2 meters. The glaciers, around 50 centimeters. That means bye-bye Britons, farewell France, see America, and all the rest. Oh, you'll just move elsewhere, or buy a boat, you say. Well, let's face it, right now some 90% of the people live near the sea. Even one meter of sea level rise would destroy the U.S. East Coast. Even one meter of sea level rise would destroy the U.S. East Coast and inundate places like the Maldives, or the Netherlands, or Bangladesh, the Nile, the Delta, and Florida. Make that 80 meters and virtually all the world's major cities drowned. There won't be enough land left for agriculture, and ironically, there won't be enough drinking water because most of it will all have gone salt. And really, we're up to our necks in this already, literally. As the world is heating up and all kinds of evil feedback effects kick in, Take the North Pole. Okay, so it melts. Now that's no big deal. It should not affect the sea level, but there's a horrifying catch. The Arctic ice also serves as a mirror, bouncing sunlight back into space. No ice, and the dark ocean will absorb the sun's heat, speeding up the warming of the oceans even more. Or take Greenland. Should its permafrost melt, global sea levels will go up 7.2 meters worldwide. Now you think that's bad news, hear this. The permafrost hold holds billions or tons of frozen organic waste, like a big freezer. No permafrost, the dead stuff will start to rot, and it's going to stink, and it's going to release vast clouds of methane gas. This should speed up the big melt some more, because methane happens to be a very powerful greenhouse gas itself. So where will it end? No one knows. One rather disturbing forecast forecast is that the process only stops after the Earth has become a super hot, lifeless world, much like Venus. Outside you'll be able to melt glass and bake bricks. Life will no longer be possible on our planet. Fortunately, it doesn't have to end that way.
Our planet has gone through stuff like this before. 100 million y millions of years ago, back in the age of dinosaurs, the Earth went greenhouse too. Probably as a result of the geological process. But then our planet was almost completely free of ice. The sea actually stood two to three hundred meters higher than it is today. But, well, the dinosaurs didn't seem to mind. And it's another comfort. Luckily, the poles don't melt overnight. The entire process should take hundreds, if not thousands of years. There should be plenty of time to build some kind of Noah's Ark. Um, but on the other hand, it isn't exactly reassuring that the big melt has already started. Of all the apocalypses you'll find, this is the one happening as we speak. Already the sea level is 15 centimeters higher than it was 100 years ago. For the next century, it's expected to rise more, anything between 10 centimeters and 6 meters. Scientists argue it might be a good idea to invest in life rafts.